Hello everyone and welcome back to On the Beat. I'm Stephen Bailey, as always joined by David Wilson and Trevor Haas. Tomorrow, Syracuse travels to Pittsburgh to take on the 25th ranked Panthers in a rematch of what was a pretty good game earlier this season. Uh, the big news is that backup center by Musakita hasn't practiced the last two days after spraining his ankle, uh, spraining his right knee, excuse me, uh, late in the first half against Clemson on Sunday. And without him, Jeremy Grant might be playing some center. Um, how does that kind of play into into this game, and what kind of trouble might Talib Zana and the Pittsburgh front court give Grant and Christmas? Yeah, Zana's obviously the issue. Um, I think I said it after the Clemson game that I think Rakeem Christmas has proven he's cap uh, a good enough center to be playing you know, 25, 30 minutes a game. The only issue I think really becomes if he gets into foul trouble and you have to use Jeremy Grant for more than 10 or so minutes. You can get by with him for 10 minutes, but uh, anything more than that, Zana should be able to feast on uh, Syracuse. Fortunately for the Orange, the Panthers have really been struggling lately, especially on the offensive end. Uh, so they're, they're pretty one-dimensional, I think, uh, with Keita out, but they can they can get to Zana inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christmas has gotten a lot better in most vets to the game. He's definitely an offensive weapon now, whereas he wasn't before, and his defense has improved too. And I think the one thing is foul trouble that may plague him in this game in particular, because Zana is really a guy who can exploit p players down low. And if they go to him periodically, that's just going to hurt uh, Christmas. And I think he will get in foul trouble pretty early, probably. Mm -hmm. And I think what we'll see Syracuse do is tighten up that zone early on to try and protect Christmas and, and deny the high post to Zana, which is what Pitt went to last time. We saw Zana get the ball in the high post. He looked at a low post, or, or he would pump fake and try and get to the rim. Uh, in that game, Christmas had four fouls. C.J. Fair had three fouls. Jeremy Grant had three fouls. So, so Zana was very effective. But... The problem with tightening the zone is you leave Lamar Patterson open on the outside. He had four three-pointers in the second half of the last game, and I mean that was pretty jarring for Syracuse. So, so how do you kind of balance that? Is there, you know, a way for Syracuse to, to try and match those, or are you kind of playing, you know, you're going to give them one or the other? Um, fortunately for Syracuse, again, is that Lamar Patterson has cooled off a lot since true. the last game. He Very struggled true. a lot against Virginia. Um, obviously, you don't want to leave him open on the perimeter. I think Jim Bayham is going to have to get very creative with the way he subs when Rakeem Christmas inevitably picks up a foul or two. Is he going to take him out after one, use Grant for a couple of minutes, bring Christmas back in? It's going to be one of the more difficult challenges I think he's had in terms of his rotation this season. Mm -hmm. I think one player that flies under the radar with Pitt is uh, James Robinson. He's a pretty good playmaker. Uh, he can get into the, the seeps of the zone and find uh, Patterson outside and Zion inside. I think he's pretty underrated. I think he'll hurt Syracuse a little bit. Mm -hmm. And lost in this whole thing where the focus is, is they're playing at the Peterson Event Center. Pitt's dominant against top five teams there, and Syracuse is playing for its, its best winning streak in program history at 24 games. How, how difficult an environment do you think that's going to be? It's always difficult. I don't think the winning streak has anything to do with it. I think it's the fact that Syracuse is coming to the Pete, and Pittsburgh fans like to see Pittsburgh beat Syracuse. That's fair. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's definitely a tough place to play. One of the toughest in the country, I would say. Uh, Georgetown's obviously, obviously up there for Syracuse. Villanova, Pittsburgh's right there, so definitely a tough place to play. Mm -hmm. Add in the fact that Jamie Dixon is 10-5 and five against Syracuse all time, and you've got a team that's hungry to beat Syracuse, number one, going for their, their best winning streak, and you've got a coach who knows how to beat the zone. You saw they almost did it last game with Zana, um, except for some late-game heroics by Tyler Ennis really bailed Syracuse out. So how do you think this one's going to play out, guys? Uh, Pitt's looking for that signature win, but I think we've seen Syracuse do it all year. They, they play a close game, and Pittsburgh's not a team that's going to blow Syracuse out. And Syracuse pulls out the close games. I think it'll be low scoring in the 50s, even 40s, but I think Syracuse uh, pulls out a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been talking the past few minutes about why this game could be a tough game for Syracuse, but I still think Syracuse will win the game. I mean, like David said, they're just really good in close games, and I think this will be uh, what's been happening all season. Syracuse wins a close one. I actually think Pitt's going to pull it out. I haven't picked Syracuse to lose yet this season, but I think Christmas gets, Christmas gets in foul trouble. You know, there's not much 210-pound Jeremy Grant can do down there. You know, assuming Pittsburgh's making its shots, the environment's hectic. I do think the Panthers are going to play well. It's, it's an environment to play well in. You know, I'll take Pitt by three or four, but I do think Syracuse bounces back after that and finishes the regular season strong. So again, David and I will be going down to Pittsburgh. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at DO Sports and online at dailyorange.com. Thanks for watching.